Well, there's more than 100 questions on the FAFSA, and a lot of them are tricky, and getting them wrong can cost you a lot of financial aid. So here are three of the trickiest questions and how to answer them. Question number 24 asks about the schooling level of the parent. Now that may seem simple, but actually there's a lot going into that. If you have a parent who went to college but did not graduate from college, fill in the bubble that just says high school because that's the last grade that they finished was high school. But it means you might qualify for some additional aid because some scholarship foundations have aid specifically for students who will be the first ones in their families to graduate from college. The second question I think is very tricky is question number 41, which asks about the assets and investments of the student. Now every dollar saved in the name of the student reduces need-based financial aid by about 20 cents. So that's a pretty big hit. If you're a student and you've got money saved and you were planning to spend it on a new laptop for school or a car or something like that, go ahead and spend that money before you file the FAFSA. Then reduce the amount you've got saved because you spent it. The second thing to do is to move that money into a 529. Now a 529 is a college savings account and your name, the student's name, can be on that account, but it's technically counted as an asset of the parents and parent assets reduce need-based aid by much less. Another question that trips people up is parent's name. Now that may seem like a no-brainer, you know your parent's name, but FAFSA actually has some quirky rules about which parents should provide information on the FAFSA. If the parents are divorced or separated, the only parent that should fill out the FAFSA is the one with whom the student, student lives at least 51% of the time. In other words, they live most of the time last year. Now, you may be tempted uh, to say, well, I'm going to cut my student off. Um, they're not going to have any, I'm not going to support them at all. Why should I have to fill out the parent information at all? Well, the government knows that game. So if your student is under the age of 24, you pretty much at least have to have one parent fill out the FAFSA. There are some exceptions. If the student is married, has a child of his or her own, or has been in the military or is a veteran, um, then they are exempt from the parent contribution. But in most cases, if the student is 23 or younger, at least one parent does have to fill out that information.